Hello, and welcome to the What's New video for Inspect 2015 Build 7500. Inspect is a mechanical integrity software that assists in inspection scheduling and managing your inspection data, as well as evaluating damage mechanisms such as pitting and metal loss. Inspect uses the latest API 510 and API 579 standards to perform these analyses. Some of the features that I'd like to discuss today will be from the API 579, Part 6, Pitting, Part 3, Brittle Fracture Assessment, Part 5, Level 1, Groove-like Flaw Assessment, Combined Local Metal Loss and Pitting, and Supplemental Loads. In addition to this, I'd also like to touch on the 2014 edition of the API 510, as well as the cloud version now offered for Inspect. Let's get started with our part 6 pitting. Here you can see I have a model already set up. At the top, under the API 575 menu, you're now going to notice in addition to the part 4 and 5 general and local metal loss options, there's also a part 6 pitting corrosion. Now I've already gone ahead and set up this model to have a pitting area on it, and you can see this on the model here, and if I zoom in, you can see the pitted area here. I also have a local metal loss that is overlapping this pitting area, which I'm going to touch on in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this pitting. So with my mouse, I'm going to right click on the damage mechanism and select pitting number one. The pitting dialog is very similar to the part four and five dialogs. You can choose to perform either level one or level two assessment along with the pitting type, either widespread or if it's a localized pitting, simply by selecting the radio buttons here. Then you'll select where the pitting location is. You can choose to put it on the inside of the vessel, on the outside, or on both sides. Finally from here, what we'll do is we'll locate the flaw center point. Now this is very similar to locating a nozzle or any other type of attachment in inspect. You simply choose the opponent that it's located on, and you can locate its center point with an offset distance and an angle, like so. From here, what we'll do is we'll just scroll down to the bottom and we'll enter in the corrosion loss. Now this input is the loss of metal to date. Along with this input is also the FCA, which stands for the Future Corrosion Allowance. So we'll enter that in here. One other item that I'd like to touch on now is the Part 3 Brittle Fracture Assessment. In Inspect, on the Part 5 or Part 6 dialogues, there'll be a checkbox at the bottom here to perform a Part 3 Brittle Fracture Assessment. Now this is a very critical checkbox to note here because in order to perform a Part 5 or Part 6 assessment, you must pass a Part 3 Brittle Fracture Assessment. It, this is not required for a Part 4, but again, if you'd like to continue with a Part 5 or 6 assessment, you will need to pass the Part 3 first. So you simply select this option and type in your critical exposure temperature, like so. So from here I'm going to click Next. So here's the second screen of our pitting dialog. Now since I'm doing a level 2 assessment, the pitting information will need to be entered here. You can copy and paste this information in from a spreadsheet as well, but the information needed will be how many pit couples you have, right here, the distance between the pit centers, the angle between sigma 2 direction and the line joining pit 1 and 2 of the pit couple K, and finally the diameters and depths of the pits. If you'd like clarification on these inputs, you can refer to the API 579 standard where there's illustrations of what these mean. Now a couple things for the user. You can specify the number of pit couples here, and then also specify the join efficiency on the longitudinal and circumferential seam. So if this pitting area happens to be going through a longitudinal or circumferential joint, you can override the join efficiencies here. And then you can also specify the size of your pitting region, like so. So then when I click OK, the pitting will be modeled on the vessel like so, and you can visually see it so you know where the pitting is happening, or you can add other pit area, pitted areas to this vessel as well. I've touched on the Part 6 pitting and the Part 3 Brittle Fracture Assessment. 
but now let's have a look at the Part 5 groove-like flaw. One of the other improvements with Inspect 2015 is the groove-like flaws to the Part 5 assessment. Now I've set up a groove-like flaw right here. I'm going to right-click on it and open it up. So I'll right-click on it and select Metal Loss Number 1. So on the Part 5 Local Metal Loss dialog, you will now see a groove-like flaw option. When you select it, the measurement type will disappear. This is because they are not needed for this assessment. So very similar to the pitting example I just showed you, we'll locate the flaw here, as well as specify the loss location, in addition to the metal loss to date, and the future corrosion allowance, and possibly perform a brittle fracture assessment, which again is mandatory to pass in order to perform this analysis. So I'll go ahead and click Next. Now on the second screen of the Part 5 dialog, we'll input the dimensions of the flaw. One of the requirements to perform this type of analysis is that the flaw is at least a distance of 1.8 times the square root of D times T sub C, away from any major structural discontinuity. Now what could be classed as a major structural discontinuity? Well, nozzles, rings, support, items like that would count. So we have to make sure that we're at least that distance away from it. So when I click OK, again, you'll see the groove-like flaw modeled there. And as always, Inspect will have individual reports for the groove-like flaw, the pitting, the local metal loss, and your damage mechanisms such as that. As I mentioned earlier, you may have noticed on this vessel I have two overlapping damage mechanisms. One is our pitting region and one is our local metal loss. When something like this happens, the API 579 has rules for analyzing combined local metal loss with pitting. Inspect will detect this overlap for you and automatically perform this analysis. The other item that I want to touch on today are the supplemental loads. What I'm going to do is open up an example file from my example project here on the left. So we're going to take the pitting example right here, and we'll open up a vertical tower. Inspect will automatically include supplemental loads, whether it be from wind and seismic loadings or any additional forces that we add to this vessel. However, there are situations where maybe the user wants to be conservative and add additional loadings to it or override the loadings that Inspect has determined. We can do this now in Inspect. So if I right click on this vessel, we'll select pitting, and we'll go to the next screen. And on the second screen, you'll notice that there's a supplemental loads button. So if I click on this, the users can actually manually override the supplemental loads used for either the weight case or the thermal case loads. Now one thing to note here is that the supplemental loads are only applicable to vertical vessels. Also included in Inspect is the updated 2014 edition of the API 510. For our existing Inspect users, you may have noticed now that instead of a maintenance inspection pull-down menu, we have an API 510 menu. As always, we can simply come in, we can review our CMLs or our conditioning modeling locations on the vessel, and we can also have a look at the remaining life calculations by simply clicking on the maintenance inspection button right here, coming to our calcs page, and clicking on our remaining life. And we can quickly see on this vessel, for example, how much remaining life is left. And then from here we can perform additional analysis or make some change to the model, things like that. Finally, I would like to touch on the cloud version that is available for the Inspect software. Users can now come and log on to the Codeware.com website and in the top right hand corner click the login button. This will take us to our client login center and we can click on the Codeware Cloud button right here. When we get to the login screen we can simply enter in our credentials and click the log on button. From here what we'll do is we'll click on the inspect icon and inspect will be launched for us. And this is inspect in the cloud. So this is the same interface that we're used to in our standalone version. 
So we can come and we can open examples. For example, I'll just take a file from our samples library right here. Or we can create new files as well. The nice thing about having the cloud is that it, we also get cloud storage. So users can save work to the cloud and access it from different places. We can also access the cloud from different devices. Say any smart devices, tablets, items like that. So if we're on the go, we can access inspect. I'd like to thank you for watching this quick video on inspect. If you have any questions or you'd like to see a demonstration, please email sales at codeware.com or give us a call at 941-927-2670.